Hey, what's up, Quantify fans? Uh, it's a beautiful January day, 2020 here. Uh, I'm sitting in my office and I'm cutting uh, some more new video to show you here uh, about uh, why I'm sitting in my office today, uh, early January. Well, as I'm sure many of you are aware, if you've been following the aviation websites, uh, ADSB has gone into effect as of January 1st. And I'm one of those guys that waited till the last minute <laughs> to get mine done. So 383 Julia Tango is in annual right now. And conveniently, while it's in annual, we decided to go ahead and um, get the ADSB upgraded. Uh, this involved, uh, for me, I had two uh, Garmin 430 non-WAS radios in the plane, and I elected to add the Avidyne IFD 540 and keep one of the non-WAS 430s. Um, now, why did I do this? Money. <laughs> okay, it's, it would be very expensive to um, uh, upgrade to the, the 440, um, in addition to the 540, which would be great because it'd be a real convenient way to cross fill the two uh, devices. But for my use right now, there's just, I mean, it's just another extra thing that's not really that necessary for me. I mean, I may find as I start doing more IFR flying that that would be something necessary. But for now, it's, um, I'm just going to stick with that as the secondary radio. And I'll do all my flight planning on the 540. At least that's the plan. So I went out to uh, Airworks, my uh, technician or um, service tech that's doing the work on this. And again, the beauty of this is he's doing both the annual and he's doing the IFD install as well as the avionics upgrade. The key thing about the IFD 540 is that uh, Abdine was running a special where you get the 540 you get a remote transponder because I couldn't use, couldn't upgrade my Garmin 327 transponder to the, uh, uh, to, you know, to WAS. I could, but it would cost a lot of money. Uh, same goes for the 430s. And the other thing is for a secondary radio of the 430s, especially the ones there in the condition that mine are in, which is pretty nice and pretty cared for. Um, they have a pretty, they command a pretty good price on the open market still. So I'm just going to sell those off and uh, hopefully get something out of it. So um, I've got some uh, video here, show you what the plane looks like in its torn apart scenario right now. And um, just a couple of uh, points I want to make about those of you who decided, you know, to do your, I, your ADSB compliance differently than I did. But uh, it's just food for thought. If um, you do own a Cirrus or you're buying a, an older model Cirrus that's equipped like mine. Just a reminder, 383 Julia Tango is a 2006 Cirrus SR20 GTS. So the cool thing about it is it already had Skywatch in it. Skywatch is that big rectangular antenna on top of the plane that actually pings other um, um, Transponders, much like uh, the uh, Garmin uh, T, uh, TIS, I think. I can't remember what they called it. Garmin had a name for it as well. So um, here's my um, here's my latest. Uh, since I can't fly, at least I can hopefully educate you in uh, what I'm doing to upgrade my plane to ADSB compliance. And it's going to be a lot of fun to get to learn this uh, IFD 540. And I'll make sure I bring my new little Osmo pocket in the cockpit with me and just kind of show you my process of learning how to use that piece of hardware. So enjoy the uh, video. Thanks. Hey, Quantum Fly fans, Dave Carrier here in front of uh, Airworks Aviation here at the Southeast Ramp. Right, right here in the background there, you can kind of see the uh, 3A3 Julia Tango in for her annual. And um, going through the uh, couple of things. First of all, the big deal is avionics, ADSB. So I'm one of those guys that 
waited to the last minute to get my ADS-B upgrade. And we're getting that done today. And some other things, uh, the annuals being done at the same time. So let's go uh, take a look and see what's going on and see what an annual entails with an SR-20. Okay, here are the uh, bottom plugs, starting from right to left. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as I look at these, you're gonna see some slight differences. Some are wetter than others. Look at the difference between this plug here and this plug here, a little bit uh, different. And what I'm told is, is that the wetter ones, we probably have a little bit of oil blow by in the rings. So you can see number six, considerably wetter than number three. So this is the beginning of the, uh, the annual. Um, as far as the plugs themselves, the shape they're in. <coughs> what you're looking for is down inside there. You're looking at the electrode. And the electrode will indicate what kind of wear that the plane has seen in that cylinder, if any. Here's a good example offered by Champion. All the work being done today is being done by Airworks LLC right here at the southeast ramp. And uh, the advantage is, is that they specialize in doing Cirrus annuals. Uh, they have the largest and uh, oldest, as far as time is concerned, Cirrus fleet at L3, which is right across the field here in Sanford. L3, which used to be uh, Delta Connection and some some other names for it, but now it's uh, a little larger schools here. So nobody knows this plane better than these guys. All right, let's take a look at the engine first. You can see the cowling is off, providing access to everything. Um, notice. The pucks were recently done at the last annual. These are those $1,200 pieces of rubber you have to buy when you when when they're due for on the annual. These are actually not due. You can see they're in pretty good shape because they're only they've only been in here for 100 hours, so those are in pretty good shape. Uh, looks like the oil has already been, or the oil filter has been changed, and I assume the oil has been changed already. You can see the large oil pan on these Lycoming engines uh, sticks way down there underneath. Our exhaust manifold, you can see the plugs are out, so the wires are still sitting here exposed. Right now, we are only lo we're looking at the bottom plugs. Haven't pulled the top ones yet. Those are still there, so if I fall my wire back up, there they are, there they are. Still in place. Engine looks to be in good shape. We are going to work on this, um, on adjusting this fuel valve, wherever that adjustment is made, but it is running a little bit rich. Um, so that'll probably be adjusted. Of course, the way a typical naturally aspirated engine works as the air comes in the front so there'll be two vent holes here on either side of the spinner air flows over the engine these baffles keep everything inside this compartment and route the air down through the engine here through these fins and actually in other areas it's also running routing air down through the oil cooler you can see it there and then down underneath everything just comes out here 
Again, here's the bottom of that oil cooler, the bottom of the engine. And I don't see any oil leak around the oil filter, so that's good. Okay, so this, this is alternator number one. And that drives P, uh, PFD, uh, the, um, or the electrical for the radios. Oh, the main bus. The main bus. Okay. So if this were to fail, it would, it would flop over to the second one, yeah. diode protected. So it would flop over to, to number two. That would back power anything this is powering. And that's why you want to, it's got a limit. Yeah. And the limit, of course, you can visually see the difference between this size and the size of the small one. Okay, just so I understand that, because I'm, I'm I may get that on biannual reviews. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, what do you what do you kill if you have a an alternator failure, right? Because that's that's your only backup. And one thing you will notice is like when, on your PFT, you, when it first started up, you'll see that your E bus or when it's running is always higher than your main bus. Right. So right. Yeah. This is like 1.2 yeah. amps higher than the other one. Maybe that's the other way. Yeah. Because you don't want ever want the the E bus constantly powering up the. Oh, I got you. Okay. So this is this way. is yeah. this one is set higher. Is that what you're saying? I have to remember, but no, this one should be higher. Yeah, that's it right. Always feeds the e bus. The e bus shouldn't feed the main bus. And this doesn't crank. This doesn't start up till about two thousand. Uh, well, till about fifteen hundred RPMs, yeah, which makes on. sense. It should be on by two thousand RPMs. Sure. Should be on by two thousand because it's directly connected to the to the actual uh, uh, camshaft. Yeah. Here. It's going up where the vacuum pump is, so it's, it's turning a different RPM, half the RPM. So all the devices in the in the plane are either electrical or electrical and um, gyro. Yep. Yeah. Well, the other gyros are electric. Yeah. The gyro's electric. Yeah, the accelerometer's the there, and then the turn coordinator for the autopilot's electric. Yeah, whereas the, in my old plane, it would boost power by vacuum. Yeah. Yep. Cool. This is, is this the pump? No, that's your fuel flow transducer. That's the transducer. The okay. Here. That's the mechanical fuel pump. Oh, right. Okay. So everything is driven. That's your mechanical pump. Mm -hmm. Where's your electric pump? Electric pump is right here on the firewall. Oh, okay. There it is. Okay. So that's sending everything up through this device here. And this is what's telling my PFD what the fuel flow is. And then it's going out to, to this spider here mm -hmm. and this regulates the distribution to each cylinder yes. okay here sitting in the right seat you can see all the avionics are removed because this whole area this whole thing is going to need to be reconfigured for the new rack and there we have it that's what's going in on the top there, you've got your remote transponder. <laughs> AXP322. So, there's my new transponder. That will connect eventually to the uh, 540, which is going in here. So the 540 and the remote transponder, and the reason we have to go to remote transponder, in this case AXP322, is because this is a WAS transponder and my old transponder which is right here this Garmin GTX 327 is non WAS and the other option is you could do it through the GPS but these Garmin 430s are non WAS Okay, question for you that I can't answer. So when we put the 540 in, there it is, beauty. So when we put this in, my question is this. Since this is now a WASP-based system, and the old 430 that's going to go back in here as the secondary is non-WASP, will these cross-fill? No. Okay, so I'll have to set those up se separately. Yes. Uh, even if you had a 430 was to 439 was, they won't cross fill. Okay, so the only way eventually, if I ever want to cross fill, is to get a, a 440, a 440 yeah. and replace that. But the nice thing about that is, it matches up with the same plugs. Yep. So okay. it, it it will plug right into that. You still have to configure it, but 
as far as the wiring, there's no wiring. Yeah. If you want additional features on it, you do have to put run wires, but that's about it. Like what? What additional features like would I want? Monitor the standby frequency. Oh, okay, okay. So if you had that in, you could. But it couldn't. Couldn't I do that from the radio selector? No, because um, it depends on the radio. But for this one, you can monitor both. You can listen to both uh, the standby and the active frequency on this, and then your your active frequency on COM two. If you have a four forty, you can listen to all four. Oh, okay. Both mains and both standbys, if you ever needed to. Oh wow, that'd be busy. Yes. I, mean, I don't. I don't do it now. No. So why would it's I need just one it? One of the yeah. features that I remember off the top of my head that they yeah. offer. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, YouTubers, that's uh, what we got going on with 383 Julia Tango. I'm real excited uh, about the upgrades to the uh, the new Abdine uh, 540, uh, 540, IFD 540. Um, I elected just to do the ADSB out because I have Skywatch traffic on this plane and actually talked to some of the people at Abdine and they actually recommended that you don't really need ADSB in because I already have um, really what they thought was a better service with the Skywatch traffic and the um, also have a, a Sirius XM weather. So at this point, uh, it was only required to get ADSB out for compliance again uh yeah it's been <laughs> kind of kind of short here it's currently january the 7th so even if i wanted to fly this plane right now couldn't do it right now because um um i don't have any sp out so after this is done we get the annual knocked out and we get the adsp done and um we're ready to go flying again and hopefully this year start on my instrument rating. Thanks a lot for joining us for this uh, quick little tour of the hangar here at Airworks in uh, Sanford, Florida. That's Kilo Sierra Foxtrot Bravo KSFB here in beautiful, and I do mean beautiful, sunny blue sky, Florida. Look at this. Look at the sky today. It's sickening because my plane is right there. Well, I sure would like to be flying today. Great day for it.